Hi, mamas, and welcome to another episode of Moms with Moms, Moms Offering Mom Support with Moms on Microphones. Today, I have my good friend Jordan with me. Thank you so much for joining last minute. I appreciate it. And <laughs> we actually were texting, what was it, two days ago? Mm-hmm. I think it was two days ago. Two days ago about Thanksgiving and holidays, because this was our kind of like first real holiday that we spent with our families. So we decided um, we should talk about that. If you're new here, go grab whatever you're drinking. It could be coffee. It could be wine. It could be hot chocolate because I'm drinking a lovely hot chocolate because I'm five or whatever you decide. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a best event session. We basically talk about anything taboo, being pregnant, being a mom or postpartum, because there is a lot that people don't talk about. All right, backstory about Jordan and I, because I feel like this is important. Jordan and I met on Facebook moms group. We literally, she was looking for someone to watch Jax. And then she decided she didn't want to watch Jax anymore. She wanted to stay home with Jax. And then we Mm -hmm. just kind of instantly bonded. We had a very similar connection. We're in the same field, started texting, and we were more honest with each other and realized we were both crazy moms together. So... (laughs) It kind of helped to be, um, so like if I felt something, I would text Jordan and be like, is this normal? Like, what would you do? And Jordan was always great and is still always great with reassuring me and being like, yeah, no, you're right. Like, I would do the same thing and vice versa. Right. So let's get to it. F-ing Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, oh, it's been crazy. Let me first just like kind of lay it out so you can kind of see how my day has been. Because we literally just got back from our trip last night. And today we got home and I wanted to be elaborate and be a Pinterest mom and decorate for the holidays. And my house is literally crazy. So everything that you see right here actually doesn't belong here. (laughs) You and I were texting. I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's do it. I'll hop on Zoom tonight. So I'm literally like, my tree is from the nursery. My seven month old doesn't need it. This is from my mudroom. He doesn't need it. The wine though, this I needed. So it worked. Um, So yeah, so today we wanted to decorate for Christmas. Did it happen? No. If I had more time, would I have dressed nicer for this? Probably not. But uh, yeah, Um, I think today was a crazy Sunday because Thanksgiving was nuts for me. Was it for you? It it wasn't. I'll just say it was better than what I anticipated, but it was still so overwhelming and caused me so much anxiety that I feel like I didn't really need. Right, right. I've always been kind of stressed out about holidays because all my family is a little bit separated and we typically spend Thanksgiving with my in-laws and they live on Long Island. So it's a three plus hour drive for us and it's way different traveling with a baby. Um, Like... We can't just sit in the car and say, hey, you got to pee? No, you're good. Let's just make it. Like, that doesn't happen anymore. So it was definitely 10 times more stressful. How far was the drive, like, time frame? So going there, to be honest, wasn't awful. We left on Wednesday, so the day before Thanksgiving, and I thought it was going to be crazy because of traffic. Traffic. But that was honestly okay. Coming back was the hard part. What normally takes us three to four hours took us like five and a half hours to get home. So we were like going nuts. (laughs) Did you have to stop because of the baby? We had to stop because the baby was crying and he was hungry and my dog had to go out. My husband was hungry. Like, yeah, if it was just me, I would have just flew home, but it's not just me anymore. (laughs) And you never, I think the hardest thing too is like, I don't think some of our family think about this because they don't pay attention you don't know what type of ride you're going to have. You could have a phenomenal ride on the way there. But then, like you said, on the way home, it could be hell. You literally don't know. At all. Yeah. And my son, for everyone who doesn't know me, which probably is a lot of people, just has a little bit of health issues that we're still trying to figure out. So we kind of came to the conclusion that we believe he's allergic to our dog. And so our car ride was miserable. He was just diagnosed with asthma a couple weeks ago. So he's been doing like asthma treatments, but we think the dog like triggers it. So being in the car, it was like so much worse. So we got to Long Island. Yeah, we got to Long Island. 
my in-laws have dogs. So his breathing was, was worse than it's ever been. We kept doing his treatment. So that kind of threw off my holiday and then coming home, it was the same thing. Like he just struggled. So yeah. Uh, traveling with a baby is not the same. <laughs> well, and not only that, but like you have to pack. By the way, I loved your little video that you did with packing because that was phenomenal. I have little organizer bags that I use from the hospital that have everything in them. I love that we're both organized because it makes me feel so much better. <laughs> um, I'm also- not though. I'm not. I put no. on a front. <laughs> I put organized on a good chaos. front. Yes, that's exactly what I am. But it's also hard because like you don't know how much to pack. Like you you're formula feeding. I'm combo feeding if I need to. So like, I don't know, should I bring formula? Am I going to have enough breast milk? Am I going to produce enough? Is it going to be awkward with me nursing my son in front of my family? So it's like all of these things is like, what do I pack? Do I pack extra clothes for every single day? Do I pack an extra, extra pair of clothes? Do I pack enough diapers? Like it's what the hell? (laughs) And I will say, thank God for Amazon because I was like packing and I was like, oh, I don't have a lot of stuff, but I don't want to go to the store before the holiday. So I'm like sending things to my in-laws and I'm texting them and I'm like, look out for this package. I just sent bibs and I just sent baby spoons. Um, So yeah, I literally am not the best at packing either because I feel like I I overpack on certain things and then I completely forget others. Thankfully, my mom is phenomenal. She's had four kids. So Granted, her oldest is 12, so it's been a while since she's had a baby, but she's been slowly stocking up on things um, because I've forgotten, like, the last time we went down there, I think we only brought, like, two bibs, and of course, he spit up everywhere, so she bought a whole bunch of bibs. We have a pack and play there now and a couple of toys, so it's nice to have that, like you said, to say, like, okay, I know if I forget something, I'm set there. But right. they also change as they get older. So something that might be there, you're like, I don't really use that anymore. So um, right. like my mom had one of those sit me up seats. And you've seen my son. My son is a six month old baby who's wearing nine to 12 month old clothes. So sit me up seats. Mm-mm. I probably wouldn't even be able to get his one thigh in there. He's not going to fit into that. She's like, well, what am I doing with it? girl, I don't know. Keep it. What if I have a second child? I'm not going to want to lug right. all this crap back and forth, but right, crap. It's just packing alone is stressful. And exactly. then did you cook anything or make anything? No, I didn't. And you know what? I all, I, the way I say it that way is because I always do. I'm normally so good. And normally I offer too. I'll be like, do you want me to bring something? Didn't even offer this year. I didn't have it in me. I said, you know what? Me coming is enough. (laughs) I felt like it was enough because it's too much. But you know what? My animals are so good that they didn't expect anything. They really didn't. They're like, just bring yourselves. Yeah. And that was really, really nice. Um, so no, I didn't, (laughs) which is good. I ended up making, um, the only thing I did make was I made it the night before I made homemade bread because it was quick and easy. I shouldn't say it's a three hour process. So it's (laughs) not quick it is quick. definitely not quick um but I made it the night before and it's delicious and I was like okay this will be my contribution because last year I brought um green bean casserole and I'm like I'm not buying all the stuff for that I'm not making that no thank you so I was like I'll make my bread my bread is simple it'll take me th- like three hours but I can watch tv I can pack at the same time and I showed up with it and that was the first thing that was gone so I'm like okay so I'll just continue to make my delicious yummy homemade bread that's literally in Tupperware containers I remember to bring Tupperware containers so I could bring leftovers home that's That's smart that's smart my contribution that was that I came I smiled and I tried to like keep the stress reined in a little bit because I really do sometimes like let out my stress but this time I was like you know what let's try and bring it in Jordan let's wear a smile let's let everybody see the baby and kind of just get on with it and it was good we had a good time it was a little bit stressful but we were on our way there and my air pressure tire light came on and mind you I have a two-hour drive hour 45 but two hour sometimes because we stop so I give two hours and I think we were like I don't know maybe like 20 minutes in the ride and the light comes on, comes on, and Jimmy's like, oh, what's that? And I'm like, um, my tire pressure light just came on. 
Thankfully, I have a newer car that it'll tell me which tire it is. It's not advanced enough to tell me what the tire pressure is, but I've always had problems. So Jimmy also has a uh, portable air air pressure tire pumper, whatever the hell they're called, in the car. We love so a prepared he van. <laughs> oh, he is. He does that and then comes in the car and he goes, well, you have a nail. And I'm like, no. I'm like, okay, so what do we do? And we drove down Thanksgiving Day. Mind you, nothing's open on Thanksgiving Day. No. Nothing. So I'm like, well, there's nothing we really can do. Let's just drive. Like, I'll just drive super slow. We'll get to my aunt's. We'll figure out what we can do when we get there. I did not want to just sit there and be like, okay, we're going to stop here, stop here, stop here with the baby. No. And he was sleeping. So I went 65 on the highway the whole entire <laughs> way. Did he sleep the whole way? No, but he was fine. He slept like an hour. And then the last 30 minutes he woke up. And Jimmy kept telling me, he's like, pull okay. over, pull over. Let's check the tire. I'm like, no, because he's fine. He's fine. Right. The car is fine. I can tell that like it's losing pressure, but we're not, not at a bad point. So we get to my aunt's. And the real kicker was the next day we were going to go leave and I had to work at night. So Jimmy's like, well, let's just go to get fix a flat. We'll wait till you get home, take my car to work and we'll get it fixed um, the next day. I'm like, okay, perfect. So Jimmy goes to get the fix a flat, goes to use the fix a flat. It explodes. <laughs> everything, everything didn't want to go right for you. No. And he was sleeping. <laughs> the baby was sleeping at this point. So I was like, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Jimmy comes back out with a new fix of flat. Of course, the baby wakes up and it was time for him to eat because at this point it's been an hour. So I feed him. Jimmy gets back in the car and he's like, it, it's just not working. He's like, I don't know if it's going to be good. And I'm like, okay, well, we can make it. We can make it. Doesn't he wake up again? And no. Like, so it's and like everything has two hours. to go around the baby's schedule. It has to. Yep. So yeah. thankfully I had a bottle. I had a bottle already ready. I said to him, I was like, I'll just use the emergency bottle. Like, that's what it's right. for. It's just start driving and I will feed him the rest of it in the, in the, thing, um, in the car. And then I'll sit in the back because I had work. If I didn't have to work, it would have been fine. And I wouldn't have been so like crazy. So right. we fed him whatever. And then he fell asleep. Jordan, I fell asleep on his car seat like this and he was holding my hand and I'm like, okay, you're making this terrible time. So worth it. <laughs> what a sweetheart. What a sweetie. Yeah, I any anything I've learned, like you have to do around the baby's schedule. Like that was one of the main reasons I was stressed about going was because I knew it was going to throw off Jax's sleep schedule. And once you throw that off, like that's it. Like you can't Done. enjoy the rest of the weekend the same way because I'm telling you, everyone's like, oh, if you keep the baby up and you give him all this energy, like he's going to sleep no. so well through the middle of the night. I don't know who made that shit up because that is not true at all. I told you, and my family's crazy. Like my family, I love my family and they're great and they're so much fun, but they're loud. They're not quiet. They're a rowdy bunch. And my aunt, she has uh, two grand, grand, grandson and a granddaughter and they're like a year old. So they have cribs and everything all set up at the house, which is so nice because I didn't have to bring a lot. So my mom's like, oh, I think he's getting fussy. He wants to sleep. And I'm like, he's not going to sleep. Right. I know he's not going right. to sleep. And if he does, he's going to go down for five minutes and someone's going to wake him up. Mm -hmm. Didn't he go down for 15 minutes? 15 minutes. So this kid took an hour nap and a 15 minute nap. And it was past his bedtime, all of that. So we get to my mom's and he's refusing to go to sleep, of course. And I love our parents like they mean so well but our kids are very special kids they mm -hmm. are very like certain ways so my mom was like let me take him you and jimmy sleep it'll be fine and i'm like okay an hour goes about by and i finally couldn't do it anymore because he just kept crying so i go mm -hmm. down and she's like i'm fine i'm like you might be but i'm not like i right. can hear my son crying and i'm not okay so i will just do it She's like, well, I feel bad. What do you usually do? I'm like, I don't know. I'm a first time mom. I'm figuring it out. What do you mean? I don't Literally, know. Literally, same. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. And, you know, I was really tired. And actually, one of the yeah. nights, so we were there Wednesday until Saturday. 
Oh, so God. yes. Yeah. And it was fun. We had a great time. But by the yeah. time like Saturday came, I was like, we need to go home because I need my kid to sleep in a crib instead of a pack and play. And I need to sleep because he was going to bed at like midnight some nights and then was up every hour. I was like, this is not working. How I can't function this way. I can't. I finally had a sleep routine for him and now it's completely broken. So yeah, it's listen, holidays worth it because I 100% love spending time with family, but stressful for new moms, 100%. I give you props for going for as long as you did because I only went Thursday to Friday and I don't think I could go longer than that because I think it would be a lot more difficult to get him back onto his routine. We are yep. still struggling to get him back onto that routine. He's sleeping much better today. but And then when you tell them, like they're like, oh, how is he doing? And you're like, um, he's not sleeping. Right. Oh, that's fine. That's normal. Like, I understand that it's normal, but it's annoying. <laughs> right. Did all right. this work. Yeah. Yeah, I did everything to kind of get them on a routine. And now it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it, but stressful. <laughs> I get it like the fun to things of um people saying you, again you and I are very similar of oh you hold the baby too much you should let someone else do this you should let someone else do that like okay thank right. you but no right yeah I mean I'm like the kind of mom I don't know if you feel this way but I feel everything if I can tell my kid is tired or stressed or upset or hungry like I feel it it hurts me. It physically hurts sometimes. And yeah. having, um, you know, a baby with medical needs, it's like times 10. So I don't know if you had a lot of people at Thanksgiving, but there were like, I don't know, I think it was like 15, 16 people. And so awesome. I was so stressed the entire time because yes, I want everyone to see my son and enjoy him and enjoy his presence. But also I'm trying to protect him and I'm trying to protect myself because I know how I am and I get extremely anxious when I'm worried about him. So being with like my family, I don't want to seem like the crazy mom of being like, nope, go wash your hands or nope, like you're getting too close to his face or don't kiss him on the face. Like I don't want to be crazy, but I also want to be because that's my child and I'm going to protect my child. And if you can't respect my boundaries, like, sorry court we have to we have to like I'm going to I mean that. I know that you all experienced COVID we also experienced the whole family having COVID my son's okay. had rhino he's had other viruses we've been in and out of the hospital and I cannot tell you how many times I need to remind people to stop kissing my damn baby I know he's so cute just stop kissing him yeah it's listen we have to keep doing it. If I have to come off as mean, I'll do it. I don't care anymore. I really don't. You know, at first I was like, oh, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Nah, sorry. Until you sit into a hospital room and have to sleep in one of those stupid pullout chairs for three or four nights, you have no say. You know, we have to do it. We have to. So we'll stick you together. We'll to keep say, texting each other. <laughs> obviously. I have a 12 year old little brother and I've only ever had to tell my 12 year old little brother once. Well, right. we'll say twice. Once to wash his hands, and once if you're gonna kiss him, it needs to be on his forehead. I mean, mm -hmm. on the top of his head, nowhere near his face or on his hands. If my twelve year old brother can do that every single time he goes near the baby or goes to pick up the baby, you as a forty five year old adult can do the same thing. Right, right. You have At more this self point, I I wonder sometimes. And this is just me being me. Sometimes I can be petty. I don't know if you're petty sometimes, but sometimes I can. <laughs> so I wonder sometimes if they just don't remember or if they just like don't care. I don't know. I don't know. Is it that or maybe like it's just different values? Because I know times have changed, I think. I don't think the not kissing thing has always been as prominent, but I think it's pretty out there now. Like I don't think we're the only moms who feel that way. I think it is generational because the more I talk to like, my mom and my aunt about things they're like oh well that was different when I was your age that was different when I was your age and I do think that there are certain things that maybe we're a little crazy about um and that like the seats 
mm-hmm. I don't think the seats are a problem. Shoot me if you think that that's a problem. I probably don't think I can say that on YouTube or podcasts, but um, I don't think they're a problem. If you leave your kid in them all day long, right, and that is all they do, then yes, that becomes right. a problem. But if I'm right. doing the you dishes and he wants to be near me, I'm going to put him in that chair for a little while and let him play with me. And then we're going to go play on the floor. He's going to be fine. Right, right. Listen, they get flatheads either way. My kid, you know how often I play on the floor? He's still getting a helmet next week. <laughs> Listen, it is you what decided it is. which one. Yes. So my son's getting a helmet. At first, we were kind of worried about it. I was like, why are people going to think, you know what? When my kid is 14 and his head is perfectly round, he's going to thank me. So it's all good. We're going to do a basic blue helmet and we're big Bills fans. So we're going to like um, cut out on the cricket, like the Bills logo and stuff. Sorry, mm-hmm. Bills, come and sue me. It is what it is. So um, yeah, but you know what? It's not that bad. So he's not going to need to wear it that long. And it's going to be cute. I'm excited for it. And you and I talked about this. I think it's more common now to put the babies in them than it right. was. And it's really, it's really honestly not that big of a deal. It's not. Yeah. I was talking to a new mom at work last night. She's pregnant. It's her first. And she was asking questions. And I said to her, at the end of the day, it's your child and it's your family. Forget what everybody else says. And forget yeah. what everybody else says you should do and what you shouldn't do. You decide what's going to work for you and your child, and nobody else matters. Bottom line. I'm curious. I'm sure you do because I feel like our families are also very similar. Do you get all the time, like your parents or like old other adults saying, like, well, I did this and my kid survived, or look how you turned out? Do you hear that all the time? That's all my mom does. All the time. She's like, oh, I love my mom. Dina, if you're listening, I love you. Um, but she's always like, I did this and look how you turned out. You're fine. <laughs> I'm like, am I though? <laughs> uh, you know, like years of trauma, um, years yeah. of trying to make sure that I was normal. Also, mom, if you're right. listening, I love you too. And you're great. And like, I've, <laughs> I have turned out great because of you. But seriously, we've, yeah. we've seen some things and we haven't. But I, again, that's what I think about that's what the generational stuff is It's like my mom didn't do certain things because her mom did and she didn't like it we're doing certain things because we saw our moms do them and we didn't like it like there's nothing wrong with that right right it's just change things are changing but that is exactly what you were saying like you're the mom so you get to pick and that's kind of what josh my husband and i talked about with our boundaries and the rules that we set yes they're strict but That's what we've decided for our child, our family. So the next time someone births, adopts, has a C-section, fosters, anything for their own kid, they get to pick. Sorry, it's no longer anyone else's choice. And I think I really like that you, you really are so strong and you are, you're very nice about it. Like you're not rude. You're not like, yeah, no F you. Like, this is what I'm doing. It's more of like, Hey, yep. I respect that. But I also am asking to respect me because I feel like it's, there really is that fine line with your family is like, you don't want to come off disrespectful to them and you don't want to piss them off, but that's your child and they're either going to appreciate it or they're not. And right. Oh, well. You're not going to make everyone happy. You're not. No. But in parenthood, I'm telling you, if I didn't do that, if I didn't have my boundaries, if I wasn't vocal about what I wanted, I would go crazy. Yes. I really would because I already sometimes have severe anxiety over this. So that is the only thing that I can control and I can hold on to is my choices, you know. So that's kind of just what I've like grasped on to. And I, I saw something today. I don't remember exactly what the quote was, but it really kind of reflected was I have anxiety of being around my family, thinking that I'm being a bad parent, which causes me to focus on being such a good parent and not being the parent that I am. Wow. And it's so real. Like when you, when you go other places, especially with your family, as you want to show that you're a good mom, but you also want to just be a mom and just be you but you can't right right yeah I feel like with being a mom 
Like, whatever you do is going to make someone upset. There's really nothing. There's nothing that you can do that every single person is going to agree on. I guess besides, like, you know, doing bad things to your kids. But even some people think that that's a good way to punish, you know. So, again, there's no, there's really no way that everybody agrees on. I wish our parents or our family said to kind of feel like more of the support of like, I'm glad that's working for you because I don't need you to sit there and tell me. <laughs> Wait, special come here. appearance. <laughs> show her, show her. So this man who doesn't like Christmas pajamas, my mom bought Christmas pajamas and he's wearing them. We love them. Do you he all have matching? Of course we do. I'll have Love to send that. you the picture later. Please do. Bye. Um, <laughs> and he's been, he's been wearing them and he's like, I love them. Um, Good. No, I just, I feel like I'm nervous about Christmas mm. because not for this, this year, but like for next year and the years to come. And I don't know if you've thought about this. I'm an overthinker. I think five years ahead. I don't know if I want to take my son from my home, from his place where Santa's going to come, he's going to have all his presents, to go to somebody else's house to open more presents. Like, he's going to want to stay home and play with his presents. Right. I don't know if I want to bring him all over the place. I think I want to just stay home. And if people want to come to us, I'll host. I don't care. I'll host. But I don't, I don't know. How do you, have you thought about that yet? You know what? I actually have thought about it and we actually implemented it last year because um, I had a high risk pregnancy. So I pretty much was like, I'm not traveling. So if you want to see me for Christmas, you can come to us. And that like my husband and I, man, that comes off so rude when I say it. I promise I said it a lot nicer. (laughs) My husband and I sat and we kind of talked about what we wanted holidays to look like because we all have his family they're together but my family is completely separated so I have three parents I was raised by my mom and my stepdad and then my dad who now lives with me with his kids who are six and eight so they're children they believe in Santa Claus still and everyone doesn't always get along so we had to sit and actually chat with everyone about what we wanted the holidays to look like and we started it last year so we are hosting Christmas because I want Christmas to be um, a little bit easier on me <laughs> mm-hmm. and for my son and for my sisters who are six and eight years old and deserve that. So yeah, so everyone is coming to my house. So we're going to have like, I think we counted like 16 people again. Um, so Christmas Eve is also my father-in-law's birthday. So we're going out to eat for Christmas Eve. So we don't have to worry about, you know, making a mess in the kitchen and everything like that. And then Christmas morning, we will wake up in our house and we will stay in our home. And I'm super excited for it because, you know, I, one, I want to keep our routine. We talked about how stressful it was breaking that for Thanksgiving, but two, like, that's just, that's the best way for us to all, to all be together. And for my son and my sisters to really experience a holiday that uh, we can control. Well, and I feel like Thanksgiving doesn't bother me because Thanksgiving is just dinner, whatever you hang out. But Christmas is so, I have the greatest memories of staying in my pajamas all day if I wanted to, or matching pajamas, but staying in my pajamas all day and opening up and having like Christmas breakfast and all of that in my house and not having to leave. I just really like that idea. And my siblings are going to be older when he's older. They're 10 and 12 now. So by the time that he's old enough to really like understand Christmas, they're not going to care. And if they do, oh, well, I did tell, I did tell, tell, uh, I did tell my mom the one exception I do have is if we decide to go on vacation as a family somewhere and that could be like because my brother lives in South Carolina so if we could make it a tradition to go to South Carolina and be with my brother for Christmas I would be okay with that because that would be like okay we're gonna go see another family member that is different to me than going to someone's house because right no I get that I don't know I get it 
crazy how your your traditions change when you're when you're a mom right and I guess there is that point and not for every family because every family looks different but there is that point where like the children grow up like I grew up and I have my own kids and now it's like kind of our time to be I don't want to say in the spotlight because I feel like that feels incorrect but you know it's our time to host it's our time for our kids to have that like magic you know so there is that time where like I think the grandparents step down a little bit and like kind of give you that role and and we're ready to step into it I feel I think that's correct and I feel like it's like you're passing the torch like you're passing the baton it's your turn now and I think that Christmas is such a special holiday there is so much magic like you said it's so special and it's so important to be able to give that to a kid and I don't know if it's why it's just Christmas for me because I don't feel that way about Easter I don't feel that way about Thanksgiving, St. Patrick's Day, and I'm Irish. <laughs> Christmas is just, I don't know. I don't know. Right. It's a feeling. It's a vibe. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It is. For some people. I love it. What are some like good things that weren't so stressful about being around your family with this year and Thanksgiving? That was different, obviously. Yeah. Um. Well... I think what I love just about my in-laws is that they're extremely considerate. So I have, you know, food allergies. So they always incorporate things for me. They made sure that they got a sweet potato for Jack. So we mushed it up and he got to eat sweet potato. So that was really cool. Um, He's eating food. (laughs) And yay, he was behind a little bit because of some of his medical things, but he is. Um, He's not behind. He's right on track. Right, right. So I think that was really nice. I really liked that, you know, my husband's grandparents got to be with him because they don't travel as much anymore since they're older. So those were some of my favorite things. My mom and my sister came to Long Island too, which was really nice. Um, nice. Yeah, so I really like as I get older and, you know, our families grow, they are starting to like intertwine a little bit, which feels cool. Because if you think about it, like a few years back, like they didn't even know each other. And now we're sitting at a Thanksgiving table together. There's something so special about that. So yeah, yeah. I think that was my favorite part. What about you? So we actually, I mean, we did it the night before at my dad's house. Um, I figured Thanksgiving is all really good food for him to start eating not pureed. And the doctor gave us the okay. And she was the one who said, she's like, yep, this is a great time. So he started, um, at my dad's, he had some turkey, some mashed potatoes. I made homemade mashed potatoes. So I made mashed potatoes in the corn for my dad's. So I just left out mashed potatoes for him. He was not a fan of the mashed potatoes, which (laughs) broke my heart because I love mashed potatoes. Could be texture. Could be texture. I think could get over that. And then we went to my mom's side of the family. We went to my aunt's house. And I will say, it was so nice being around all of the moms. There was four moms there. So being around all those moms with my anxiety, I think when you and I talked about this, I was terrified to start him on not eating like the mushy purees anymore just because right. of the choking. He was ready. He was showing signs of ready four weeks ago. But I was so nervous to try like real not mushy food and everybody being there really just like saying hey can I try giving him this or I gave him I let him step in a pickle but I wasn't sure at first I asked my mom I'm like can I let him eat the pickle she was like well don't let him eat it eat it but he can like step on it and everybody like watching him eat everything and seeing him house all the food was my favorite part because Thanksgiving's my favorite holiday so sharing that with him and having everybody watch it and it be like his first real meal was amazing and I can't wait for like Christmas because he'll be even to eat even more (laughs) right oh that's awesome I'm excited for him I can't wait I I can't wait to just be like here you go here you go um it's definitely nerve-wracking 
I'm right. not even going to sugarcoat that. But we've had Thanksgiving leftovers for the past three days. Tonight was the first night that we moved on from turkey to chicken. I, I did ground it up, though, because I was too nervous with the turkey. So I was like, I'm just going to ground everything for a little while. And he had some pasta. Also grounded that up. So small baby steps, but we're getting there. Oh, good for you. Good for Bino. We'll get there. Jax and I will get there. I have to yeah. stop, like, stressing that we're behind because... He's growing, he's eating, and he's loving it. So it is what it is. And you and I talked about this. If at one years old, he's not eating like anything regular and solids, I got you. I'm going to call you out on it. But right now, you have no concern. But if at his first birthday and I'm there and you're like, yeah, no, he's not getting a smash cake because he can't eat that yet. I'm going to tell you, Jordan, I will get him a smash cake and I will watch him for you. (laughs) We're thinking of smash steak. Like, let him suck on the steak, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. I am all for that. I love that. There we go. We'll have a party. Are you going to do a tomahawk steak with, like, the bone so he can have the bone in his hand or just a regular steak? No, he needs the bone, at least for the picture, you know? Yes. Okay. I'm here for it. But no, I... <laughs> You need to give yourself more credit. I think that with all of the stuff that you guys were dealing with and have been dealing with, I don't think I would have started for a long time either. Honestly, I don't think I would have. I don't think you're behind. I think you're doing everything the way a mom should be doing. Right. Yeah. I mean, it really is like when you're all comfortable and we're starting to get comfortable. So, yeah, and we're, I'm excited. And it'll get easier and easier every day. Yeah. Okay. So the famous question that I always ask at the end. Okay. In regards to holidays, what are three pieces of advice that you would like to tell other moms that you didn't have? Okay. Three pieces of advice. I kind of touched on them earlier. Um, set and stick to your boundaries. Um, be comfortable keeping your schedule. So if your kid needs to take a nap and he or she or they are feeling like they need to lay down and actually will let them do that try and stick to a schedule and then I guess my third one which I need to take moving forward I'm not always the best at taking my own advice but you know try and enjoy it because I feel like I was just so overwhelmed about it being Jax's first real holiday that I wanted everything to be perfect and go smoothly that I almost don't remember it You know, and I don't want that. I don't want, especially with Christmas coming up, I want to remember it. I want it to be special for all of us. So, yeah, that's my advice. How do I do? Present. I like that. I really liked your end one because I think you're right. Is you you're so fixated and not really being present in the moment that you don't get to spend those times, and it's an exciting time. They're experiencing all of these things for the first time. So, yeah, not gonna forget. I forgot this one time, and I don't anymore. So cheers. Cheers. Thanks for joining last minute. And thank you Thanks for, for having me. Thank you for being a part of this. As always, mamas, if you want to see more videos or if you want to comment or subscribe and have all the videos come through, hit the subscribe button. If you liked this video, hit the like button. If you have any similar situations or anything that you'd want to talk about about holidays, put the comments down below. And if you want to follow my Instagram and Facebook page for daily reels, which we're getting back from daily reels and maybe doing like once a week reels because of mom life. But if you want to be on there for some inspiration, some real raw truth, the pages are right here. And if you are listening to Spotify, All of these links will actually be in the description box. And I'm just going to say this. Jordan is going to hopefully at some point make a podcast. So be on the lookout for her. She's definitely going to be on again. And maybe the next time she comes on, we might be able to drop her information. And she can be on that as well. But as always, moms, thanks for joining. And hope you continue to survive and thrive. Because that's what we do as moms. Bye, besties. Bye.